All right, guys, so here's a video to help you solve these practice problems that you've been assigned to complete on your own. So if you're struggling, I want you to watch this entire video so that you can gain a better understanding of what we're asking. Okay, so we've been given a quadratic function and we've been given a graph of that quadratic function and we need to identify the key parts of this graph. So first it's asking for our domain. The domain of a quadratic function is always going to be all real numbers, at least until you get into algebra two. So all you need to know is that the domain is all real numbers. And all that means is it's asking for all the possible inputs for this function, which you could put anything in for X and get an output, okay? Next, we have the range. And the range of a function would be our possible outputs, our possible Y values. And if we have a quadratic function, as we do here, and it's shaped as a U, as all quadratic functions are, basically all of our possible Y values are gonna be where that minimum is and up above. Anything above that point could be a possible y value for this quadratic function. So my y value, my range is going to be y is greater than or equal to, and that's because that quadratic is opened up. So y is going to be greater than or equal to 3. Because at this point, point on my y-axis, y is equal to 3 here, and that's where my minimum point is on that parabola. The axis of symmetry, that's the imaginary or invisible line that cuts that parabola in half. And we can find the axis of symmetry by doing negative b divided by 2a. So in this scenario, we're going to have a negative 4, because 4 is my B term, divided by 2 times A, which in this case is just 1. Negative 4 divided by 2 is going to equal negative 2. And that matches where I've drawn it on this coordinate plane. This point right here on my x-axis is negative 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. My vertex I can find by either looking at the graph, where is the minimum point of that parabola, and that is at negative two would be my X value because it's always gonna be where my axis of symmetry is. And then I need to find my Y value. Well, here my Y value is very apparent that it's three. Okay, and I can look at the range and I can tell what my Y value is. However, if you're not given the graph or if you're not given the range, then you can always find your Y value by plugging in your X value from your axis of symmetry. So negative two, we're gonna plug it into the quadratic function that we were given and see what our Y value is, our output is. So negative two squared will be four. Four times negative two is negative eight plus seven, well that's going to equal three. You can always plug in your X value that you found for your axis of symmetry to get your Y value, your output of three. And that will give you your vertex. So I'm gonna label my vertex here at negative two, three. My y-intercept, well, my y-intercept is when my x equals zero. So I can either plug in zero to my quadratic function, which is zero squared plus four times zero 
plus 7, which is just going to equal 7. Or I can just look at my quadratic function and identify what my constant is, which is 7. So I'm always going to, I wrote that wrong, I'm always going to list my y-intercept as an ordered pair, which would be 0, 7. Because what I did here was I plugged in 0 into my function, and the reason why I did that is because my y-intercept will always be where x is equal to 0. Okay, so I can label that point on this graph as 0, 7. Well, looking at this graph, it's asking for what are the zeros? Well, my zeros are where that parabola crosses the x-axis. But if my parabola is opening up and I'm above the x-axis, that means it will never cross the x-axis. So there are no real zeros. There are no solutions for this quadratic function. There may be imaginary or complex solutions, but there are no real solutions, meaning real numbers, that would solve this problem. So, that is question one on practice. Not practice two, but practice one. So let's look at this next question. Number two says use the graph to find the characteristics of the function. So first we have our domain. And just like I said before, our domain for our quadratic functions in algebra one will always be all real numbers. Then we're gonna look at our range. All right, this graph opens down. So I don't have a minimum, instead I have a maximum. So I'm going to look at my maximum point on this graph, and I know that all of my y values will be below that maximum point. So that means I'm going to have a y is less than or equal to, and that's because I have a maximum and not a minimum. It's going to be less than or equal to 9. Oh, well, it's not a perfect number, is it? So that's what we have to figure out. Look at this point here. We're not on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're not on that line for 7. So it's going to be a little above 7. So I can put 7 there. But where? How far above 7? Well, we don't know exactly. So we're going to have to come back to that. So I'll erase it for now because we're going to find our axis of symmetry first. And once we find our axis of symmetry, then we can find our vertex. And that vertex will be our maximum, which will then tell us our range. So to find my axis of symmetry, I'm going to have a negative, negative 5, divided by 2, multiplied by negative 1. A negative, negative 5 is a positive 5. 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. So that means that my axis of symmetry is going to be at a negative 2.5. So x equals negative 2.5. And if I look at this graph, I can see that that parabola, again, is not on a clear coordinate line. And that does make sense that it would be my axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals negative 2.5. Now that I have negative 2.5 as my x value, now I have to plug it into my quadratic function. So I'm going to have a negative, negative 2.5 squared minus 5 times a negative 2.5 plus 1. Again, all I did was take that value for my axis of symmetry, 
plug it into the equation that I was given, and now I can solve. And by simplifying, I will find that my vertex, my Y value, my output is at 7.25. Okay, because 2.5 squared is going to be 6.25, and that's negative. Then I'm going to add, let's see, what's 5 times 2.5? 5 multiplied by 2.5 is 12.5. So negative 6.5 plus 12.5 plus 1 does equal 7.25. So my vertex is at negative 2.5 and a positive 7.25. So that means now that I have my vertex and I have my axis of symmetry, I now also have my maximum point for my range. So y will be less than or equal to 7.25. And I could label that point on the graph if I needed to as well. Now I need to look at my y-intercept. Well, my y-intercept is when my x is equal to zero. So if my x is equal to 0, I'm going to have negative 0 squared, which is just going to be 0, minus 5 multiplied by 0, plus 1. So that's going to equal 1. As you can see, that's just the constant that I was given in my quadratic equation. So my y-intercept is always just going to be 0 and whatever my c term is. And I can identify that here on my graph right here that point is zero one now let's find the zeros of this quadratic function so your zeros they can be estimated but basically what when you're looking for your zeros you're going to look for the point where they are crossing your x-axis okay so I have a zero here, and I'm gonna actually highlight that in pink, sorry. I have one here, and I have one here. And we can just go ahead and estimate those zeros. Okay, so that looks like my X is gonna be close to, let's see, that's zero, one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So it's just past negative five. So I'm gonna have X, is equal to a negative 5.2. And this other zero or solution is going to be x equals 0 0.2. Now, if I had the space, I could definitely take this quadratic equation, plug it into my quadratic formula, my negative b squared, so negative, negative 5, negative, negative, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 multiplied by negative 1 multiplied by positive 1. That would all be divided by 2 times negative 1. Well, when you simplify all of that, and you can estimate, you would end up getting about negative 5.2 and 0 0.2. Moving on to number three, we need to graph the quadratic function. All right, so for number three, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our axis of symmetry. that will give us a good starting point, okay? So we're gonna find our axis of symmetry, which is gonna be negative b divided by 2a. So negative one divided by two times two, which is just gonna be negative one fourth 
or negative 0 0.25. Whether you like it in a fraction form or you like it as a decimal, either one is okay, and that is going to be your axis of symmetry. So where do I put that? Well, it's at a negative and it's just past that Y axis. So I'm going to estimate and put it just about here. Before negative one, but right after the Y axis. Okay, so one B, the next step, I need to find my vertex. Well, if I wanted to find my vertex, then I have to plug in either my fraction or my decimal into the quadratic equation and simplify to find my output. So at, I'm going to do 2 multiplied by negative 0 0.25 squared plus a negative 0 0.25 minus 6. So when I simplify that, okay, a negative 2, 0.25 squared, it's going to give me 0 0.0625 and that all has to be multiplied by two. And then I'm going to subtract 0 0.25, and then I'm gonna to have to subtract six. Well, if I multiply that by two, I'm gonna get 1 point, 0 0.125, then I'm gonna subtract 0 0.25, and then I'm gonna subtract six. And I'm going to get negative six point negative six point one two five. So that means that my vertex this was not a very nice vertex to give to us in a practice problem is going to be zero point two five and negative six point two five. And if I had to draw that on this per, on this graph, I'm going to do so right here. Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So a negative 6.125 I'm going to estimate is right here. And I'm going to label that as negative 0 0.25 and a negative 6.125. 6.125 and that is my vertex. Okay, this parabola is going to open up. I can tell that by looking at my A term. So it will open up. And so now I need to find what my Y intercept is. And that makes sense because my Y intercept is negative six Okay, so step two, my y-intercept is zero, negative six. So I can go ahead and graph that right here. And I have my point. So now what I can do is use a table, my x, y table. And I'm gonna have to erase all that math for the vertex if I wanna try to do an x, y table. See if I can fit it in. And if my vertex is at negative 0 0.25, I want to find a point at 1. Okay, so when my x is 1, what is my y? Well, if I'm going to plug in 1, then I'm going to have 2 times 1 squared plus 1 plus, oops, not plus, minus 6. So all I did here was I took this equation right here and I plugged in that x value of 1 
and now I'm going to get my output, my y value. So 2 times 1 squared is just going to be 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3, minus 6 is going to be negative 5. Negative 3. I was looking at something else, sorry. Negative 3. So I have an ordered pair here of 1, negative 3. So when my x is 1, my y is negative 3. X is 1, y is negative 3. 1, 2, 3. And I can put my point. So this is 1, negative 3. Now, if I wanted to find another point, I could look at negative 1. So if I do 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1 minus 6, well, that's going to be 1 squared is positive 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 1 is 1. Minus 6 will give me negative 5. So when my x is negative 1, my y is going to be 5. So this is the point, negative 1, 5. And that's another point that I can put on my graph to connect the dots. And I can do one more point. Okay, say I did negative 2. If I plugged in negative 2, so 2 times negative 2 squared minus 2 minus 6, what does that equal? Well, negative 2 squared is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So at negative 2, my when my x is negative 2, my y is 0. So that's one of my solutions. So I'm at negative 2 and 0. And I'm highlighting that a different color because that's the solution. That's a point where it crosses the x-axis. Now I have one, two, three, four, five points. So from this point, I can graph my quadratic function. I'm going to start at my vertex. And I'm going to start going up and draw my arrow. And here I'm going to connect down. I can bring it up a little bit further. And there is my parabola. Okay. You don't always have to find the solutions to your quadratic function. You can just find points, x values, plug them into your equation, and get your y values. The only point that you have to find when graphing is going to be your axis of symmetry and your vertex. Okay? This part right here is a must because you need to know where exactly your vertex is, your min or your maximum point. After you find that point, you can simply result, graph the rest of your problem by using an XY table, okay? So, but if you prefer to find your solutions, you can. It's just sometimes they're gonna be decimals, so it's easier just to do an XY table. Okay, now we're on the back. And this is standard form practice two. This is the back page or the second page of your practice. And here we're identifying our domain range and axis of symmetry again. And this particular problem, of course, is not ideal for finding our axis of symmetry. So that's why I wanted to work it out with you. So if our domain, again, is all real numbers, that's not going to change. Then we have our range. In our range, we're going to take this minimum value because we have a 
parabola that's opening up, and we're going to look at all of our y values that are above that point. So here I'm going to have a y, and that y is going to be greater than or equal to, and that's because I have a min value, so that y will be greater than or equal to. And I'm just going to estimate that that looks like a negative 4. So y will be greater than or equal to negative 4. And there's probably a decimal, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. Then we're going to look at our axis of symmetry. And I can visually see it's going to be pretty close to 1. But it's, of course, not going to be exactly 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my B term, so a negative negative 5 divided by 2 times a which is 3 and that's going to equal 5 over 6 so my axis of symmetry is at 5 6 which is not quite 1 it's just a little below 1 so I'm just going to leave it as a fraction my vertex then how can I find my vertex well, to find your vertex, you have to plug in that fraction or plug in that number to get your vertex. So you would have 5, 3 multiplied by 5, 6 squared minus 5 multiplied by 5, 6 minus 2. Okay, so all I did was take that axis of symmetry, what I found to be my x value, and I plugged it into the equation and I'll get my y value. I've already done the math here. It's going to be about negative 4.08. And so we can now fix this minimum range as negative 4.08. Okay, so it's just a little past that negative 4 line. My y intercept. Well, my y-intercept, I can tell right now, is negative 2. So I'm going to list that as 0, negative 2, and I'm done. That's where this parabola crosses the, the y-axis, sorry. And so I can label that as 0, negative 2. Finally, what are my zeros? What are my solutions to this problem? Again, I can now, because I have a quadratic function that I can factor, Right, because I have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. So my a times my c term is going to be a negative 6x squared. And I can find factors that are going to add up to give me a negative 5, which is just going to be negative 6 and a positive 1. I can factor this to be 3x plus 1 and x minus 6. If I have these factors, then I know that I'm going to have x is equal to 6 and x is equal to a negative one-third. So those are my solutions. x equals 6, x equals negative one-third. And all I did was factor this equation that I was given using the um, factoring method that we learned multiple weeks ago and was able to factor and solve. All right, so that problem is done. Looking at number two, this is one of the easiest ones that they gave us, so let's see what we can do with it. So we have y equals negative x squared minus 6x minus 8. So if this is my function. What I need to do is first find my axis of symmetry, which is going to be a negative negative 6 divided by 2 multiplied by negative 1. If I simplify that, I'm going to have 6 divided by negative 2, which is equal to a negative 3. OK, 
Okay, so my axis of symmetry is at one, two, three, right here, negative three. And I can put in my axis of symmetry. Step two is to find my vert or one B, sorry. The second part to step one is to find my vertex. So I'm going to take that negative three and plug it in to my quadratic function. So a negative x squared becomes a negative negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 minus 8. Well, a negative 3 squared will be 9. So negative 9 plus 18 minus 8, and I'm going to get 1. So my vertex is at negative 3 and 1. All right, negative three and one. So positive one. There's my vertex, negative three, one. From this point, I could look at this quadratic function and try to solve it. I can look at my y-intercept, negative eight, but negative eight is not gonna fit on this graph. I only go down to negative 5, and this is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. So that's not going to help me get a point on this coordinate plane. So let's look at using an xy table to find our point. Well, if my axis of symmetry is at negative 3, and my, I already found my y to be 1. What I would do is I'm going to go, well, I'm going to do negative 2, and I want to do negative 1, and then I'm going to do negative 4 and negative 5. So those are going to be my input values. These will be my inputs. That's what I'm going to plug into my quadratic equation to get my outputs. So I'm going to have a negative, negative one squared, minus six times negative one, minus eight. I find that to be, well, negative one squared is one, negative one. Sorry, gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. So this will be a negative one plus six will be five minus 8, well 5 minus 8 is going to be negative 3. So at negative 1, I'm at negative 3. That's my output. So I'm going to graph that point. Negative 1, I'm at negative 3. Right here. And I'm going to color code these so that you can follow along with which point they are. So that was my output of negative 3. Now I'm going to plug in negative 2. So I have a negative negative 2 squared minus 6 times negative 2 minus 8. And that is equal to, well, negative 2 squared is 4. So a negative 4 plus 12 minus 8. is equal to zero. So at negative two, my y is zero. So negative two, one, two, my y is zero. So that's gonna be one of my solutions. Then I'm at one, we already found that point. That was our vertex. That's already graphed. So then we're gonna do negative four. Well, to plug in negative four, I'm gonna have negative negative four squared minus six times negative four minus eight, and that again is going to equal zero. So at negative four, I'm at zero. And there's my point. I'm just gonna highlight that in yellow because that's a solution. 
And then finally, I'm going to be at negative 5. You'll notice when we're graphing these, there's always going to be a pattern. Once I reach my vertex, I should have mirrored images on mirrored numbers on either side, meaning mirrored Y values. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen when I plug in that negative 5? If I have a negative negative 5 squared minus 6 times negative 5 minus 8, guess what? It's going to equal negative 3. And I can plot that point. I'm at negative 5. So 3, 4, 5, negative 3 right here. And I have my second, fifth point. Okay, so here is my parabola. All right. The last one is number three. And number three, we start working with decimals again. So I'm going to tell you that if you're watching this video, we're just going to change this equation. All right, we're going to graph instead. We're going to graph f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, because that's what I would rather graph something that I can visually see and do instead of graphing decimals. So step one, we're going to find our axis of symmetry, which is going to be a negative 4 divided by 2 multiplied by 1. Negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to a negative 2. All right, all we did was negative B divided by 2A. So I'm at negative 2, 1, 2. And here is my axis of symmetry. All right, now to find my vertex. 1B, to find my vertex, I'm going to plug in that negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 2 squared plus 4 multiplied by negative 2 plus 4 again. Well, to simplify that, negative 2 squared is going to be 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 4. Mm -hmm. That's going to equal 0. So my vertex is equal to negative 2, 0. So I can plot that point, negative 2, 0, and that's my vertex. So let's find the other points that we need on our quadratic, on our function. Oh, I forgot we still haven't done step number two, which is our y-intercept, because our y-intercept is on this graph this time. And that is equal to 0, 4. So I can go ahead and plot that point. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and put it here. That's 0, 4. All right, let's use our x, y table to find some other points. All right, if my axis of symmetry is at negative 2 and 0, or my vertex is at negative 2, 0, then I would go up. So I'm going to do negative 1 and 0. I already know 0 is 4, and I can do negative 3 and negative 4. Well, if I know negative 4 is going to be, if 0 is 4, I'm willing to bet that negative 4 is going to be 4, but I'll plug it in to prove it to you just in case. Okay, so we're looking at our equation, our new equation, and we're going to do negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 4. Does that equal 4? Well, negative 4 is 16. Minus 16 is 0. That's going to equal 4. Yep. So that was my y-intercept. 
that's going to be my mirrored dot for my y-intercept. So I'm at negative 4, positive 4, I'm right here. Okay, now I need to just use the, find my other two points. So when my x is negative 1, I'm going to have negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 4. What does that equal? Well, negative 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to have 1 minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 1. So at negative 1, I'm at 1. And then finally, I'm going to plug in that negative 3. So I'm going to have negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 plus 4, and that will equal 1. Do you see the pattern here? We went from 4 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 4 because it's mirrored off of that vertex. Okay, so you can use that knowledge to help you graph your quadratic functions. And there you go. Okay, so that is the practice problems one and two. Hopefully you've had a chance to finish them and get them turned in. They are due in class on Thursday, March 4th.